It's the Playhouse Podcast with Kat and JJ. I believe it. I missed everything. Missed the show. What am I going to do? Check out the Daily Podcast. A question as old as the Sphinx. What do women really want out of men? We're going to try and give you an answer a little bit later on in the podcast. Let's go. Uh, so we bought a new house. It okay. is what it is. And uh, I had plans to be <laughs> sleeping in my new house tonight. Uh, we were supposed to get the, the, the keys. Okay. We're supposed to be moving in right now, uh, but the people uh, who, who were uh, owning that house uh, decided they want to stay in my house another two days. They, they want to keep it two days past the sell date. So you're under contract, though, to be able to get in there. Like, you're closing and moving in. Like, all of these things are on paper, but they've requested to stay a little bit longer. Am I getting that right? That, that's affirmative. They want an extra two days. They're not looking to to, to, to prorate closing cost on that. They're just looking to use my house as a free motel. I just, like, am I a jerk for wanting to be in my own home right away? But, I mean, okay, so moving is one of the most stressful things that any human will do, especially if you're moving from one house to another. you got to get that one sold. Moving on, JJ went through this whole thing, but um, there's nowhere for you to go and let them have this because they're probably under the same amount of stress that you are. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. My, my, my wife says that, that we can maybe stay with her sister. She wants she wants to compromise. No. She wants to give them a few days. She said the same thing you said. She said that she has her sister and girlfriend. I, I, I you know, I, I don't care. I, I don't want to stay with my wife. Says I want to stay in my home. Am I a jerk for wanting to? I, I bought the home. I bought it for my family. So, uh, well, okay, and hang on a second. Is he a jerk cat? For the wanting is, to be in his house tonight? It wasn't his the other day. So I know but you bought it. But it's his today. I know. Um, I, if I were him, I would go and do a once-over of the house and just make sure that everybody is on the same page. If anything is done to this home, any damage is done, then you will accrue the cost of fixing it. Jen, your first thoughts on this? I would absolutely let them stay. You know, this really? happened to me and my husband before, and I think... I mean, you, I know how hard it is nowadays, so a week or two is nothing. I think it would be okay for them to stay an extra week or so. But, like, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to stay in a hotel? I mean, you probably are, like, my wife and I just had this happen where we moved out and we had to move in, like, the same friggin' day. Like, this is hard to do. You would let these people stay an extra amount of time. How about this? If you were going to let them stay, would you charge them? In all fairness, yeah, I would. I mean, because they have to stay extra days, and we can, you know, what's wrong right. with staying at a hotel, you know? We have a, a lot of people texting in a $1,000 a night. Yeah. I would charge you, and I'm like, that seems exorbitant. Then it would make a hotel stay of 107 seem a little bit more appealing. I think it's crazy. So, JJ, you just went through this. I mean, did you and Trish move by yourself? No. no I'm, I'm well, sure you had friends no, lined up. Like, people were there to help you, so now you're just going to tell all those people, like, Nope, we're not moving today. So, what do you do with all your stuff? Like, yeah, that's yeah. The, that was the, that the was the big question. Corner? Is like, I mean, well, I, I think a lot of people use, you know, a moving truck, or they would keep it an extra day, or they would be putting it in storage and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, you're used to moving your stuff into your new house. Yeah. So now you're going to rent a storage truck longer, or all those things. I mean, it is just not convenient. That person knew sixty days ago when they signed a contract that they had to be out on whatever today is, the sure. six. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's not that tough. Be prepared. It's the seven, mm-hmm. but that's okay, too. Uh, and uh, and uh, w- w- when I started seeing the text that had stuff to do with legal liabilities and people right. getting sued, then I was like, whoa. Well, I did see, uh, well, Leslie said we were purchasing and the people ended up screwing around, so we backed out and then they sued us. Best decision that we made. I was looking into someone said, what are squatter laws? And I did look into if they claim adverse possession. So if they had been living there for longer than 15 years and they just stayed there even after you purchased, then they have right to occupancy. That's crazy to me. And then the squatter laws like in L.A. Even though someone else bought it? Yeah, people just just go into these houses and state claim and i don't know if they're smart enough that there are laws that protect them but i would just say no we have made the exchange everything is legal well minnesota is pretty easy to do this you uh you shut the heat off 
you shut the water off and all <laughs> of a sudden, them out. right. I yeah. mean, you can freeze them out during the winter, but like if you're living in LA and you don't really care, yeah. and it doesn't matter. And they're going to pee on the lawn anyways. Oh, my God. What a Sounds mess. like a great idea. Bingo. How fun. Last week, someone lost an eye at bingo. Bingo. Bingo what bingo? Bingo. Bingo. All right, time for listener bingo. Simple enough. You got to call immediately if you fit one of the following two criteria. Maybe you're somebody listening who? Who has gotten an award for something. Gotten an award for something. I was watching the American Music Awards 50th anniversary special. It was on last night. And um, they had all of the past winners from the very first year, which was 1974. And even one of them came out to sing their song, Ms. Gladys Knight. Love that Love this oh my God. Please welcome Gladys Knight. So you're looking for an American Music, music award, award winner, winner from okay. 1974. <laughs> if that fits you, call immediately. No, you won an award and you're very proud of it. Maybe it was maybe you're a realtor and you won like the best 30 under 30 or whatever the award was. I want to know about it and why you're so proud of it. I'm looking for anyone listening who was at a really weird funeral. All right, like they did uh, a crazy musical act. It was like a flash. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mob just broke just out. something like you went to the funeral to pay your respects and you were like, Goo! Yeah. and a whole episode broke out and you were like, what the hell is going on? Well, did here? you hear about um, Richard Simmons? Yeah, when he, when he got, in? that's what I was kind of where I was oh. headed. He got buried in his uh, shorts and tank top. Yeah, they and- said, they said, saints and angels get ready to get into shape. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really cute. <laughs> Can you imagine just everybody in heaven not wanting you to get there? Yeah, they're like, like yeah. don't bring that energy up here. <laughs> Relax, Richard. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking for anyone listening who it was been, it's been to like a really unique funeral or maybe you're somebody listening who? Who uh, has won an award for something and what was it for? How's Jace doing this morning? I, I'm doing good. Good. Which one do you fit, bud? Um, I got an award for being stood in the trimester. Oh, nice. My son got that last year. What was it like? Did they do a ceremony for you? You got to stand up in front of all your peers? Yep. Everyone clapped. It was amazing. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Where Where is it now? Is it on the fridge? Is it in your room? It's hanging up in my room and my dad's. Nice. And is and this, what does it mean to you? Like, do you strive to get that again? Do you hold yourself to a different level now? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to do good in school. I love that. This is the single greatest moment of your life so far, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. One of many. I mean, what get you, used to it. I mean, how could it get any better than this? If I were you, I'd just cash in now. I'd retire. That's terrible advice. Don't <laughs> listen to this man. You'll become just like him. That okay. wouldn't be so bad, would it, Chase? <laughs> You know, he tried out for the twins and he didn't make it. And that's whoa, why he's trying to hold everybody whoa, down. Whoa, like the people that get to the whoa, whoa. to 105 and they're like, oh, I ate bacon and cigarettes Jeez, every you, day. You were soon to the trimester <laughs> at what school? Where are you going to school today? Brainerd. Yeah? Nice. How's that? How is it up there? It's it, it's okay. <laughs> all right. I love Brainerd. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. It's, and, and, it's uh, all right. All right. And, uh, and what are we aspiring to be one day, Jace? I'm going to be a pilot. Oh, nice. Like we need more out there. Yep. Everyone's yeah. getting too tired. Doing like long yep. shifts. You got scary. good eyes? I, I do have pretty good eyes. All right. Nice. Eat those carrots. <laughs> All right. Anyway, have you ever we're seen gi- a bunny with glasses? All right. We're giving you the no, worst you- advice. All right, Chase, have a great morning. My God. <laughs> Hey, let's say there's a single mom that lives across the street from you, and she's just kind of parking wherever she wants next to hydrants, kind of kitty corner on the street. Are you calling the tow truck on her? Really? We've got this going on in one of our listeners' lives, and it's a little sticky. We'll get into it Tuesday morning during the live show. Right now, let's cap off the podcast. Your little man is going to be turning 13 here soon. July. He'll be a teenager. Soon, he'll be bringing home potential mates. And you'll look at that girl that walks in with him and say, she's not good enough for Liam. But if she was good enough for Liam, what would be the number one quality you think she would have? We've spoken about this before where I tell him, you know, I know it's evident you are going to eventually start dating, but they have to have their own stuff going on. So 
luckily, where he goes to school, most of the chicks that go to school there are like chicks. four sport athletes. You know, they're they're in something all of the time. And I said, they can't be blowing up your phone, dude. They can't be like, ah, you have to go to basketball practice. Like, um, why? You got to spend some time with me. Come do some over the sweater stuff at my house. So you no. would say the uh-uh. number one quality that a young man should have based on your experience is being a young, busy. A w- woman. A, a young woman. woman. Uh, but, but like, what's she looking for in Liam? In Liam? Like, so- what's a good quality in Liam? Well, what do you think his best quality is? He, uh, I think he's very complimentary, uh, and he doesn't get embarrassed if somebody is looking good. He'll say, "Oh, you look really good today," and he learned that from Derek. You know, Derek hands out compliments like candy on Halloween, and I appreciate that. And Liam has picked that up. If I dress up or do my hair or my makeup, he just showers me with compliments, and I love that. And he does that with other people too. So, if a man is worth marrying. The number one quality is not being able to accept a compliment. Or give them, you said, right? Or give it's them. It's what he... It means. is the ability to communicate. Oh, yes. He's a very good communicator. And I love that he is so quick to say, man, I messed up and I'm sorry. That's an a amazing quality in any human. If somebody walks up to me and they did something wrong and they said, I'm so sorry, I messed up. Wow. You get points in my book. For the sure. world has become such a less superficial place because the two qualities that apparently no woman cares about when they're looking for a when they're looking for a man to marry mm-hmm. religion, okay, and height. Well, that's great though. Yeah, I mean, you can't do anything for about you. the height, right? <laughs> you Listen, you're a guy like me. You can't do anything about the height. I mean, your kid's going to be short. My kid's going to be short, and and I like the not caring about religion. It's like you're falling in love with someone, and you don't care about that. You know, it, it shouldn't stop you from there loving There are a lot somebody. of cultures, though, where that is the primary. Yeah, but I think right now with this generation, it's not a thing. The elders are the ones that put the stress on them, and I think if you have that strong of a connection with religion, you're really out there only looking for people of that religion. If and that's Liam okay comes too. home in five years, he comes home from his freshman year in college, yeah, and he says, Mom, I really love this girl, but <laughs> I have to become Latvian Orthodox. You're letting him, retru- you letting him uh, you know, roll? It will not be no? a big deal. No. You're gonna, he's, you'd let him. You'd let him go to another religion. Oh, I don't care. I went to another religion for Derek. I was raised Catholic. Go yeah, that's not church. another religion. Well, I mean, it's a different just, way of thinking. Lutheran, it's a different way of Lutheran is just lazy things. Catholic. <laughs> it's not. God. It's not another religion. It's just doing less. We're not going to do this on our show and sling things towards. No. Uh, so if if Liam said, "I I have to, uh, I'm going to become Jewish," okay, for this girl, you'd let him. A lot of people convert for love. If that's what he wants to do, that is a huge. For Effort. a girlfriend, not a fiance, but a girlfriend. Yeah, that's his that's his prerogative. I don't I would never say do not bring a girl around here because of her religion. I didn't say that. I'm just saying, would you let him convert? That's his life. That's a lot of studying. He's nice. A lot of memorization. And he says, Mom, I need to convert. That's him. For this that's girl. Him. For that booty. You'd let him? <laughs> I don't care. I do not care. That's up to him. I feel you. But do. I don't want him to ever date. Ever. Don't ever have happiness. (laughs) Jennifer Hudson on her show the other day had this 12-year-old Saborno Bari on, and he's the youngest person to ever be accepted into uh, New York University. So 12 years old, he's going to be going to college. My dad uh, works at one of the best high schools in the country, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially he teaches math and physics. Every single time he was writing on the blackboard, it seemed like these magic symbols were just coming to the blackboard. And he introduced me to the world of math and science. He helped me read through all of his textbooks. (laughs) And eventually, by the time I was seven years old, I found myself lecturing around the world on the same topics that I just couldn't understand a few years earlier i had to literally remind liam for the 80th time to put his razor razor scooter away and not leave it in front of where i drive my car every single time it's like this is where i'm going to drop it 
My mom's never spoken to me about it. He before. said the world of math and science. <laughs> I didn't know that was a world. Of course. That's what our world is like. We rely on people like this kid with brains like this that want to keep learning. I'm done learning. I, I had a friend that Melissa. I'll never learn again. <laughs> Melissa was like, I'm going to go back to college. I was like, why? And I did this face. I was like, why? <laughs> Why would you even do that? You know, and I said, you have three and a half kids. You're literally, you're pregnant with your fourth. Why are you doing this? I was trying to hinder my friend from furthering her education (laughs) and getting another degree because I wanted to lunch with her and there was no way that we would do that anymore. And I, I feel looking back, I feel bad. You know, obviously she got a better job with the degree that she pursued but still i'm in awe i'm in awe of people that keep wanting to expand their brain i'm refusing to read books in my book club what would you like to learn because i don't what would i like to learn yeah. um that is a good question Are you there don't even that, know what you want to what learn. do you want to learn what more th- what, what do you want to learn i feel like you're pretty set in your ways uh, no i would better than I, me I, I would like to learn more about anatomy like our cell Doesn't structures. Your wife help you with that? No, no. I, I want to know more of how to the body works. To, to to change what's bad about you. Yeah. So that you don't leave behind a bunch of bad stuff. Oh. You know what I mean? You, like you want to work on yourself? I, I, I would like to work on my genetic structure. Okay. If there was if there was a possibility. Okay. I don't know if there is. But I think that would be cool. To learn like But you're not gonna. A, a couple of like if you could just start eating more papaya. And I like papaya. Then, and two generations down from you, all of a sudden they'd have better eyes once you start doing it. Yeah, but what yeah. if the next generation just doesn't enjoy papaya? Well, like I can't they don't rely have to. on They don't them. have to. You you would pump up your genetic structure, is what I'm saying. Like if you could if you could start doing things right now and your legacy would be stronger down the line mm-hmm. once you start doing it. Oh, Clearly I not. Like, okay. If I didn't like papaya, enough. it wouldn't be my thing. But I'm just saying at twelve I wasn't I would eat hard-boiled like eggs, even though they're not my thing, <gasps> if I knew that my grandchildren would have a better life. I would start doing that. You would? Yeah. You obviously won't. That's nice of you. That's nice of you. <laughs> if it's something I don't enjoy, why would I do so it for the next generation? What if they down for you and you only. See, I'm a great granddaughter. I go, I help clean, I enjoy conversations, I will do anything, I'll drive them anywhere. I don't know if my grandkids are going to be like that. I was thinking about that on my way to St. Francis. I was thinking, I wonder if Liam's kids are going to do this for me. You know, I hope they do. I hope I have that good of a relationship for them. They're never going to do anything for you. They're not even here yet. They're not even a thought. You could start doing stuff right now and you're not. (laughs) Hence the papaya. Um, Have you ever brought anything to a restaurant uh, as far as dessert, like, like my dessert. own condiments, <laughs> your own silverware. No, to like uh, celebrate a birthday or anything like that. Oh, uh, like yeah. I think and... we brought in like a cake or cupcakes for our kids birthdays. OK. And then said, like, bring it out. Can you light the candle? Yeah. Yeah. And whatever. they were cool about that. So this guy is going viral with this video for blowing a restaurant out of uh, the uh, he just wanted to blow it up. What they did. He brought in this very expensive birthday cake for a friend. And the restaurant essentially like stole the cake. I actually had called the restaurant ahead of time to ask if I could do the cake cutting instead of them. But they said that was a safety hazard. So they ended up taking the cake back into the kitchen to serve it. And so then at the end of the dinner, when we had asked our waiter where the cake leftovers were, we're expecting them to bring out the remaining half of the cake. But instead, they just say that there's no cake left. <laughs> so the only explanation is is that this high-end New York City Midtown Steakhouse took the cake back into the kitchen, cut all of us meager slices of cake to eat, and they had just eaten the rest of it for themselves. That's so <laughs> logical. I would expect yeah. that. I they would not expect any leftovers. Ended up calling him and saying that, you know, we just misplaced the cake. Listen, I've in worked in belly. restaurants. I know that there were a couple of stoned busboys that were like, oh, 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 yeah, there's cake on that plate. Let's go in back, grab two forks. Let's go crazy and get forks. rid of this There thing. was no forks being used. That was just straight up All hands. hands. Um, I, but I remember we had my grandparents. It was like their 60th wedding anniversary at a, an Italian restaurant that they went to. And my grandmother loves these cannolis from a bakery in St. Paul. 
And my mom went and got this full box of cannolis and they were massive and probably ran about 75 bucks. And she brought them and she asked the manager there, can you plate them? And she had purchased like 20 of them. They ate them all. They only brought out 10 and you know, you don't mess with my mom like ever. And so she did like a lot of this with her hands and she was like, um, no, 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 no. You have to locate the other 10. And they, it was almost like this. They could not tell her where the other 10 Cause they were already went. eaten. So she's like, you need to give me my money back then. Like 40 bucks, please put it in my hand. 